mop it up, mop it out! <laughs> Hello friends, my name is Brandon Dayton, I am your humble narrator, and welcome to Telepath Tactics. This is a game that was funded on Kickstarter, which is totally awesome. There's a fantastic campaign, but I'm just going to play a match for you guys. There are quite a few maps to pick from with different player caps. Uh, I believe four is the max. And uh, you can go free-for-all or teams and change the game type. Last man standing, capture the flag. Capture the flag! Oh! Yeah, that's good. That's so good. Like, I don't know. There's just something about uh, being able to play a really off type of game mode in this type of game. Uh, I hadn't seen that before. I was really excited, obviously. <laughs> so, um, we could also do, let's see, yeah, army constraints. Identical armies, random armies, equal numbers, random and identical. <laughs> so, uh, just to fun it up a little, we're going to do random armies and see what we get, because it could be kind of fun, who knows. Here we go, bruh! Donut Tower. It's from the Mushroom Kingdom. Ooh, we got a stone golem. Fuck. Wow, look at all these dudes. Bowmen, spearmen, crossbowmen, cavalry. What does the giant golem do? You can right-click your guys. Uh, he looks funny as shit. Uh, and um, they all have a strength and a side power and a side defense, as well as dodge accuracy and a shit ton of resistances. Then each level up uh, during the campaign will get you skills, which makes the campaign super addictive. Um, so this guy has a crush, which does 12 base damage for no cost, which is fucking huge. He has a smash, which costs 2 and does 14 damage and knocks the target back. There's a lot of skills in telepath tactics. Even the fighters get to push and pull people back, and uh, you can throw them into obstacles, which uh, I guess is why Donut Tower works because you gotta knock them into the middle pit shove push the target one space toss toss the target up to two spaces throw the target up to three spaces so yeah this stone golem's gonna come in really handy they have a photokineticist pyrokineticist so a light mancer a couple pyromancers Ooh, look at this fucking thing bone breaker you can weaken the target cripple people stunner shove we need to watch out for this guy and he has a sprint, so he can increase his max movement. Uh, so yeah, he could probably even reach if I advance at all. <laughs> but that's okay. We're not going to be sissies. We'll bring the cavalry up. And I guess uh, shift and D for done. So we'll do that. Skya Kineticism. What is that? Shadow Blast. Dark Vortex. Ooh, slow and soften. And boost an ally's attack power. That's rather nice. So I'll save save up her mana for a second. Hope I don't get shoved in this river. R to rotate. Um, this is the crossbowman. So I'll kind of keep him back. I don't want to advance super hard. I want to see what what they got for me. There we go. Bring the bowman up behind the cavalry, because that's a thing. And I am going to buff the shit out of that stone golem once I'm able. And bring this guy over here. And they've got his flank, which is pretty good. I don't think they'll be able to get this far. Oh, fire! And I'm burning. Shite. So that guy's kind of done for. <laughs> But that's okay if we can push the bottom hard enough. And I'm not going to be able to flank him, really. This flying guy's going to gonna wreck me. It's going to be able to flank really easy. Alright. So this guy's got one attack left in him. I'm going to try and make it count. I'm going to smack the mage back there. I suppose. Yeah! Dodged. Of course. Fuck. I, I want these guys to fall back. This shit's getting real over here. Get mad. Cool. 
call him mad. Call him crush you. All right. We'll go ahead and spend some mana. Fuck him up. Fuck him up. Yeah. We'll go ahead and get the cavalry in to, to kind of hold our position a little bit. That'll weaken them pretty significantly. Hmm. The f animation on the cavalry is a little fucked up. Like, I'm not sure which way I'm facing if it weren't for the arrow. I'd like for it to be straight like everything else. Like, why is the cavalry on a slant? Huh? <laughs> Can this guy get around? No, not quite. We're gonna fucking do some damage. Can I push him? Shove! Get the fuck out of here! <laughs> Yeah! Drown, son! <laughs> Alright. The cavalry could do it. So, we'll let him. Because he can move after attacking. And then we can kind of move the golem in. I like that you can switch back and forth between the characters. It's not like, this character's turn, end turn, and then you can't use that character again. You can kind of move this character closer, heal him, go attack somebody. It's really dynamic in that way, and I appreciate it a lot. <laughs> so let's see if we can fucking wallop this guy. Hey, you dick! What are you doing? <laughs> Alright, so wait. Wait! And now there are goodies on the stage. If they had not been so obliterated by my random dice roll. Maha! <laughs> These two mages are just trying to help each other out, but I don't think that buff is going to do much at all. Am I using cold at all, or am I just smashing you with spears and stone fists? <laughs> oh, he found some bandages. He fucking bandaged up and applied some uh, thermal paste, which gives him heat and cold resist. There's also lead ointment or some shit, which gives you light and shadow resist. So it's pretty cool. I'm gonna move this bowman, grab that item sack. Grip. Got some runner's cleats and adrenaline pills. Hmm. Cool. But I'm not gonna use them. Just gonna shoot this guy. That. And then you come down here. And you got like a thing that doesn't require shooting this. That. <laughs> A knifey backstab from an archer. What? And you're dead. Yeah, dude. Mop it up. Mop it out. Okay. Okay. Everybody good? I guess we'll move and let that guy out or something. Or do we have to shoot him? Or is he gonna die because he's just drowning? Let's see. Oh, um, end the turn. How's that? Yay! <laughs> A drowning death. That's fantastic. So, friends, this has been Telepath Tactics by Sinister Design. I did rather enjoy myself. Uh, the campaign is super awesome, and I can really feel the love that went into this game. So, I hesitate... A little bit to give this game a 67 out of 100. 70 out of 100 is what I consider above average. Unfortunately, this didn't quite reach that. It's slightly below average uh, on a technical standpoint if you want to go by the scale that I've set up to do these reviews. Here's my score breakdown. I gave the controls a 6 out of 10. There are a lot of key bindings to get used to in this game. Once you get used to them, it's not so bad, but initially it's really quite over overwhelming, and although most will get used to it rather quickly, things like shift in D for done or shift in E for ending the turn is less than stellar, is what I'll say. The fun factor, regardless of the controls, is an 8 out of 10. I think this is a killer game with... Uh, some really nice ideas behind it and really pretty good execution as well. It's it's solid as hell and I find myself playing it a whole lot. <laughs> Difficulty I've given a 7 out of 10. 
it'll give you a good run for your money, but in the end, in the end, you usually find victory as long as your tactics are solid. The replayability, I've given an 8 out of 10. I really, really enjoyed all the different classes that the campaign had to offer, all the different characters, and I, while I won't find myself replaying it again right away, I do find myself playing the scenarios over and over with random team makeups uh, because it is fun to experience all the different classes. So, definitely um, 8 out of 10 for replayability. Innovation, I've given a 6 out of 10. It, it's a tried and true formula, is what I'll say. Um, it doesn't stray far from that, aside from the fact that you can sort of move your enemies into environmental hazards. But that does add quite another level, which uh, I think is worth 6 points. In the aesthetic department, I've given the graphics a 3 out of 10. I don't really enjoy the art style. It has some interesting ideas, but I think it could have been done a lot better and hopefully the and hopefully it will be revamped in the future. <laughs> the music is a 7 out of 10. I like the pace. It has that uh battle pace to it. It makes you want to kick some ass and it really gets me into it. I I won't find myself humming it the next day probably, but it's really, really good for what it is. The sound effects, I've given a 5 out of 10. They are serviceable. Each sound has its own... Each spell, each uh, action has its own unique sound. I kind of like the ploop of people when they drop in the water. And there's, there's a lot of good things. However, um, it doesn't wow me in any way. It's, it's not a, an overwhelming thing. And maybe that's good... But there's, you know, no voice acting, no no nothing. So it's kind of a bit difficult at times to deal with. I decided not to do a Let's Play of the campaign because while the game is fun, there, it's just a lot of reading and a lot of voices and my brain, I can't. <laughs> uh, for the story, I've given it an 8 out of 10. Speaking of so many characters and so many voices and the story's so well put together, even though it is obviously kind of a cliche. It starts out with two girls going to find their father. Um, but overall, I think it, it works pretty well. It evolves into something pretty good, and you get involved with all these interesting, weird characters. And while some of them do follow the tropes for their character, like, oh, that's the tough girl, um, most of them do have a relatively unique personality that shines through and is extremely likable. So I give the story an 8 out of 10. The level design, I've given a 9 out of 10. Obviously, environmental hazards and things like that play big into this game, and that is something that I enjoy immensely, taking cover behind uh, wagons for one stage and kind of just getting luring people to one side and then flanking them around the other and backstabbing the shit out of them. I would highly recommend Telepath Tactics to anybody who enjoys turn-based strategy. It's above average in my heart, for sure. I, I love Sinister Design, and I hope to see some more of their uh, unique ideas in some more games in the future. And, you know, now, now they're making some money, you know? So they won't particularly have to kickstart their next game, which is a really, really nice thought. I'm, I'm hoping that 15 bucks isn't too much to ask for this game. Uh, considering some games usually go for 50 or 60. So, you know, buy Grand Theft Auto 4 or buy four copies of this game, even though I local multiplayer, but um, I'm waiting for online. I want to see it so bad. Uh, anyways, I ramble. Sorry. If you did enjoy, I hope you will like, comment, and or subscribe. This has been Telepath Tactics. I've been Brandon Dayton, your humble narrator. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye!